all joining us uh, this morning or this afternoon in Milena's case. Uh, Milena is uh, uh, joining us from Istanbul and Bane is in Munich, right? Correct. Okay. That's correct. Great. So why are we here today? Today we are here to answer several questions and thank you all for your interest uh, to uh, look for the answers together. Uh, so for us, the main question, of course, is what is creativity, both in personal life, but in business as well? Uh, why is it important? How can one nourish creativity? What is the relationship between creativity and the comfort zone? Uh, and in how uh, can we establish the relationship between creativity and self-awareness? Why is this important? Uh, and of course, the last but not least important question is, are we born creative? Uh, to answer these questions, uh, we're going to have, or we are having today, I invited Milana Juricic uh, and Bane Katic. Milana Juricic, both, I would have to say, uh, dear friends of mine. Uh, that I've been also able to reconnect after two, at least two years <laughs> that we all had a break in communication uh, or not as easy communication. But uh, let me be brief about Milena. Maybe you already read something about Milena. Milena is actually, uh, from my perspective, a very successful entrepreneur. Um, and combining uh, some business, math, uh, IT, uh, and who knows what else, uh, because when I say who knows what else, because she's spending lately a lot of time on her bicycle and hiking. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's that's very brief about Milena. Uh, yes, uh, you probably read about uh, being the first uh, director of Google in Serbia. Then uh, for uh, now, now uh, uh, co-owner uh, or co-founder of Videomite, uh, a, a leading uh, company when it comes to broadcasting videos, series, movies, etc. In, in Turkey, and Bane Katic, uh, a fellow former colleague and current colleague. When I say former colleague, we were both uh, hosting uh, Eurovision Sound Contest in, in, in Serbia back in 2008, actually first Belvizia, right? And yeah. then Eurovision Song Contest, you were in the green room. I was head of the press conferences, but then you were also head of press conference for the Eurovision Song Contest in Germany, right? And uh, we both kind of ditched the, the broadcasting industry. You turned into supporting individuals to be doers, right? If, if we translated literally from German, Wirkung, to being doers when yeah, presenting. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I would uh, say to to appear in public with more impact. Uh, just yeah, that's that's maybe maybe more exact um, um, explanation of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I'll give a first brief intro word to Milena. Uh, what it's not being said on the social media that we shared so far. And why, why did you decide to join the webinar? Why did you accept my invitation? Uh, just turn on the mic, please. Unmute yourself. Ah, uh, true. I mute myself because I have very loud AC in the background. So thank you so much for the introduction. Um, I maybe just want to like summarize all my experience by saying like I went from being entrepreneur to going to 12 years of corporate life and not any corporate life, but very regulated corporate life because both companies I was working for, both Google and Yandex was NASDAQ, are NASDAQ listed, therefore extremely regulated. And then I'm back in the in the uh, being entrepreneur for the last five years. And I just join you because you're my dear friend. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm always happy to share my experience with the people that uh, would like to listen to. Great, thanks. And what about you, Bane? Um, I did accept the invitation because I, the first time I read about the creativity, it was a question which I'm not used to ask by anybody because people usually ask, 
what can I do to have more impact? What can I do to don't do this um and ah uh thing? And uh, you know, after after my uh, appearance on the two Eurovision Song Contests, I had also three years for German television in the world. And uh, and so when I thought about your question, why is creativity in business important? I didn't have the immediate answer, so I needed to think about it. And that's what, 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 is, what is making it so interesting, because if you really think about it, it goes so deep that uh, I was really attracted to join and to think about and to explore myself. When did I was creative? Do I am creative, actually? I don't know. So I need to think about it. So this is, I think, a very interesting topic, especially in the business context, because in the art context, you know, you're creative or you're not because you're an artist. And if people say you are not, you can say, no, you are not because I am. You know, so, so it's different. But in the business context, it's very special. So this is why I joined, because if you, I think once you understand. You were personally touched. Yeah, I was and intrigued. Attract, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's a kind of sexy to think about it and to find your answers and then understand how you can apply and how you can make your being and your thing better, your life, your business life. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's why I joined. Great. Well, thanks. Uh, why are we actually uh, organizing uh, events like this? Because I like to invite all the people who uh, not only are uh, my my friends, colleagues, uh, people that I work with, appreciate, but also people who are professionals, enthusiast enthusiasts, and above all, human beings who believe in in constant personal development and growth so this is this is why i also ask you to join uh this webinar and share your experiences so first of all we're going to be focusing on you uh, why are we doing this these webinars as maverick consulting because we like to uh support everyone and uh, invite everyone to think more critically and creatively this is kind of what what we do this is what we like to share uh this is why I invite people with different opinions so we can all exchange those and and take most out of it and when it comes to today's webinar creativity uh, creativity in business uh we picked this quote uh from scott adams a cartoonist uh he's author of the cartoon dilbert and also of, of a podcast i think it's cough real coffee with scott adams he says i used usually the first sentence uh creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes it's so powerful to me so first off we need to make mistakes uh, but who let us make those mistakes? And are we afraid to make, so, make those mistakes? Because from a lot of mistakes we made, uh, we learn things, we find new solutions. And what he says, the art is knowing which ones or which mistakes is to keep. So um, we would like also to know more about you. Uh, you can uh, first answer our first poll question and then I'm also going to invite you to type in chat what is your name, where are you uh, joining us from uh, and of course you'll have the opportunity to ask questions to uh, our uh, participants or to my guests whenever whenever you, you feel like it. So here is the first question, what is your current role? Um, please just choose one. Are you currently in mid-management, top management, employed by an SME or in transition or you're an, an entrepreneur or employed by a corporate or something totally different? So we can uh, um, get to know you just so both Milena and Bonnie can uh, definitely a better answer uh, their questions uh, or your questions and my questions so we can see who is joining us. We currently have uh, 16, uh, 15 people participating as far as I see. We need a couple more answers, please. 
because we like to go above 70% of participants. And a few more answers, please. Oh, we have people coming in and going out. Here we are. So one more and there we are. Okay. So uh, currently, let me share the results. Hopefully you can see these results. Uh, currently, we are mostly employed by an SME and then either uh, or by a corporate. So SME, then corporate. And uh, there are a few people who decide to say they're currently in mid management. OK, good. Thank you for your answers. Type in chat. Where are you from? Your name uh, so we can definitely see who are we addressing here i'm gonna start first georgia belgrade this is where we're checking in from and you can add on that okay so how is this gonna flow uh we're gonna focus on our speakers uh we're gonna listen carefully what they have to share uh what is their opinion uh, what is their perspective? What is their experience? In the meantime, you can always uh, share uh, your questions or even opinions in the chat. Uh, nice to see people from Freiburg, Vienna, Nish, Belgrade. Uh, and of course, uh, we'll try to have time for Q&A at the very end where we'll need you to turn on your microphones and definitely cameras uh, and uh, we'll use the last few minutes just to network or exchange uh, our contacts because we do believe in networking so uh, that's that's very important for us all to connect okay another question for you what aspect of your life would you like uh, uh to add more creativity to that is a very important question and i would really like to ask you or kindly to answer this just pick one what which one do you think is the most important aspect of your life to add more creativity to there is no right or wrong answer it's just the current perspective that you have which aspect of your life would you like to add more creativity to? Okay, we have 55%, 72, and Is shopping 83. a regular answer? <laughs> okay, we have two people who said other things. Okay. Uh, so let's see the results. Uh, we The winners are sales and marketing and public speaking. We have four people who would like to add more creativity to sales and marketing and public speaking. We also have three people who said uh, leadership and then two people for private life and other things. Okay, now we have kind of an idea uh, what people are expecting in the audience, right, Bane, Milena? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, we're going to focus on those. Okay, great. So now let's let's focus on the first question. Then, what is the creativity? What is creativity for you, Milena? So maybe just to frame the conversation, <laughs> at least how I think that what we should talk about it in, in this workshop, in this webinar is that uh, creativity, which is like the creative problem solving um, in day life, in, in like our personal life uh, or business life, doesn't matter. I'm not going to talk about artistic expression, as, as Vanna said, because this is something completely different. So we need to like, if we are talking about this definition, it's about just solving every day's problem. Um, I think I am creative person and I think I'm surrounded by creative people. So this is uh, this is my luck. Um, and being in the in the job where I used to be like entrepreneur and then working in um, high uh, um, fastly developing companies, uh, creativity was the key of me and my co-workers. Um, 
progressing in, in everyday life. And considering the fact that I lived in um, three and a half countries, I had a lot of creativity in my personal life around organization um, of that personal life. So creativity is just a life, like the, life as usual for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about you, Bane? Um, well, I understand what Milana is saying. I would just add that creativity for me is choosing sometimes a way of thinking which don't seems to be always the logic next step. So um, you will have situation where the logic next step will be like doing this, but something in you tells you that's not right or that this is going to lead you into a direction you don't want to end up. So creativity, in my opinion, is maybe follow your gut, maybe to do something unexpected, because if you do the expected things, you're going to get expected um, results. Uh, right, right. And um, there is a very nice saying, which, which I like a lot. Uh, life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. So if, if this is right, then it's creativity sometimes to be also brave to choose another thing. When we look, for example, uh, at, at Milena's case. So in, in life, as I am knowing about her, is that she needs to find solutions for things that are not here now. So it's not like there is no logic next step. There's just like she needs to build this step by her own. And, and, and this is, I think, creativity. Just just yeah, in, in, well, short, in short terms, because thank you, know, you I, Bonnie. I, could, I could talk for, for hours, but yeah, I'm going to stop here. <laughs> uh, when, when, you're, when you're talking about logics and intuition, yes, I understand that for, for some people, uh, yeah, when you, when you listen to your guts, but uh, th that would like to bring me back now again to Milena. <laughs> Two things, actually. It's the logic says if you're from Serbia or from the Western Balkans, right? Why are you going to go east? Why are you going to go to Istanbul? <laughs> Why don't you go west, right? Especially if you work in a corporate. That's that's a logic that's saying, right? And the yes, second question is, is yeah. and the second question is, you mentioned that you're surrounded by creative people. How do you know they are creative? Mm -hmm. What makes them creative? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is like the funny question why I ended, why I ended up east and not west. But this is the mixture of the business decision and personal life. So it's it doesn't always uh, uh, it's not always the, the logic which is like um, uh, pushing. If we if we, if we were looking into like uh, where I wanted my career to go, definitely that uh, that would be the west. But uh, again, I had some personal reasons why why I went east. Like my my father and grandma were sick at the time when I moved, and I had to be close to Belgrade. So, um, you know, um, th these are important decisions in life. And I am surrounded by, by um, creative people uh, because, again, being in the industries that I am, which is um, usually I was whole my life doing a business which is which has as a backbone Internet. Um, so this is something, as Bana said, completely new. And in order to survive, to anticipate the problems that are going to happen, um, you have to be creative or you're just not going to do that job. You would just, you know, um, go to some other industry where you can be more, more relaxed. So um, therefore, there, I am very lucky to my whole life to be surrounded by very, very creative people. When I say creative people, it means people who can frame the problems, um, under, anticipate what can happen and provide a solution for the upcoming problems that we are still not even aware that are going to occur. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically, in, in, in a way, you already touched the answer to why creativity is important. Uh, so we can tackle uh, problems uh, and find the best solutions for them. Why is creativity important for you, Bane? Because especially when you work with your clients, let's say yeah, yeah. In, the, in the last several because, years, because because you know there is no. Uh, every situations are new and created new and and person you talk to are different so uh, there is no step-by-step -step thing 
in uh, when you when you appear to people, when you have negotiations, when you have. I mean, come on! You, you're you're in Germany. You you were born and raised there. You you have this German way of thinking. It's you know one two three four five six, seven, and it, everything has to be. Yeah, right? but yeah, right. So you have your solutions as an engineer, but the thing is, people who work with people, who talk with people, uh, they are, I mean, against all, <laughs> against all things we think we we knew about Germans. Not all of them are robots. <laughs> <laughs> Only like let's say eighty percent. So. Um, the other 20s, this, uh, this is the people I worked with. But I give you an example. So I was um, I was hosting a VIP evening for a Japanese corporation. This is a very fun story. After this story, you know you can never have um, you can never have uh, what is what is the the English word for a blam. Uh, being ashamed. Being yeah. Being ashamed. Being ashamed yeah. So yeah. after this story, you know. There is nothing you can be ashamed of. So, I but I, I I will be brief. So they asked me, could you please translate a speech of our Japanese CEO in German? And I said, um, yes, of course. Can I have uh, the things? And they, they said, no, it's confident. But he will speak in English, and you will translate in German. So I said, well, okay, we'll try. And then this guy appears on stage. And then he and I announced him, ladies and gentlemen, in German. This is Mr. Da 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 da, -da. and uh, yeah, he will uh, he will talk now to you. So and then he starts. Now that man, now then we the tomato wine. And I was thinking, this was English, because I didn't get a thing. And then I was looking at his slide, and there was like, welcome. And I said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome tonight from the heart no so and then he's, he he goes by the come up to wine and the wine you're going to tell to put and this horrible things lasted like 20 minutes <laughs> so there was 20 minutes a speech i didn't get a thing i was just reading some bullet points from his presentation and made something up you know so it was totally what i was talking was totally bullshit so this was the moment hopefully was they're not very... listening to you now <laughs> I, was, I was i was i was very creative uh, that thing and the thing is that most of the people in the audience they was used to him they understood him so just i don't understand it. so this is why creativity is important that in a moment where you have no you think you don't have any solution you create a so solution that's great. Well, on, on the other hand, if, if I can, uh, I mean, I can relate to, to that to some extent, it's basically uh, to find a solution uh, and to be, and to have creativity help you there, you need to be very focused on things that matter at that very moment and neglect all other noise. So you need to find your anchor and your anchor were the slides. Correct. Yeah. And the audience because you had to deliver something. And I bet it wasn't BS. It was actually what you were able to see and then just spice it up a little bit with your charisma. And that's it. So Correct, no one yeah. can say anything else. So, and basically in, 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 um, in your line of work, Milena, how often similar things happen let's say unpredicted things or miscommunication or or problems that demand uh what kind of problems demand creativity uh well we don't have this many like live <laughs> uh live audience uh, speaking events etc but like um what kind of events uh, need creativity it's basically um I don't know. Every day there is a, there is something that we need to be creative, create, creative about. So I would maybe maybe just um, uh, rather than give like the ex example from my current company, I just want to say about the importance of creativity in any type of organization. Having in mind that I'm coming from um, small and medium companies as well as from the big companies, um, creativity is important in both areas. Uh, and it's very important how your leader of your organization doesn't have to be the whole company leads you towards creativity. So how much he or she 
uh, gives you the space to be creative, how much you're framing the problem. But also when we say creativity, it doesn't mean just creating workshops where we are like, you know, pitching ideas to each other and going, going around with, uh, with the certain ideas. It's about the framing the problems and also uh, matching them with numbers because uh, creativity and the solving proper problems have to be part of some business plan and the goal where you want to go. So it's not just the freestyling and the throwing ideas around. Um, it's about being creative and solving the problems which are aligned with your business goals. So, so to me, the... to mm -hmm. me, sorry to interrupt you, it does relate to Bane's experience because a lot of times you don't have enough input or let's say your your people, people that you're leading, don't have enough input. And if they're creative enough, they'll come to you with a proposed solution based on the data that they have. Not to come, mm, yes. not to come to you and whine like say, we don't know how to do it. Oh, yeah, of course. We lost all of the data. And oh, can you help us? Can you help us? No, they're gonna come to you and say, Milena, everything that we did so far fell apart. But we know this, this, and this. And with these three things that we know, we propose this kind of solution. What do you think? No, of course, the raising the problem without uh, giving the options for the solution is just a bitching about the problem, right? <laughs> and this is what I always say to my employees. I said, um, actually, I, my teammates, like when we are working, they're, in the, they're, they're experts on the specific field and they should know some things even better than I do. So, okay, I have experience, um, years of experience. So let's come together, talk about the, um, you know, how you plan to solve it, why, what are the pros and cons, like the quick analysis doesn't have to be on the PowerPoint, but we need to like, um, you know, fire, like in the fire chat type of uh, discussion, answer all these, all these questions and then come to the creative solutions. But I wouldn't say that every day we are like swimming in unknown. Um, we are working like, it, it, now in video might we have like extremely strict business plans with the, we know the seasonality of the job and everything so our plans are, are pretty aligned with the uh, we know what's going to happen about 70 percent 30 percent is unknown so for that 30 percent um like creativity is important you know things change corona came look what happened um you know um, um war in now Russia, Ukraine, like things are constantly changing, crash of Nasdaq, like there are things that we couldn't predict. Um, is, there, is it going to be electricity or not Then heating this winter, etc. So we definitely we have to be very faithful for the stuff that we didn't even think that can happen in the 21st century. So it's not just about the stuff about work, it's about macroeconomic things that are impacting our work. So it's so, not only about the things that we can influence, but also the things that course. we have no influence on. Okay. Of course. So let's let's ask the audience, uh, what do you think, or in your experience, which professional environment is uh, more supportive of creativity? Is it the, uh, or are those SME companies or corporate companies? Which one would you pick? Which one stimulates or encourages creativity more? Okay. Okay, let's see a few more answers and we'll have a very good data. Let's see a few more answers, please. We have about 60% now. We need one or two more to answer. Okay. SME is small and medium enterprises. Dragana, thank you for asking. Okay. Now we have enough and let's share this data. So majority of you definitely think it's the small and medium enterprises that are supporting uh, creativity more than others. So uh, yeah, why do you think so, Bane? Milena, let's start with mm -hmm. Bane. Um, well, actually, my first thought was also SME, but I think we need to understand that there's a different corporates uh, out there. So we have the old corporates like Mercedes and BMW and stuff like this. I would say the old world is not that that much supporting creativity, but we have the new ones like Salesforce, Amazon, Google and, and 
uh, big companies like that who are, for example, there is only a seven people meeting and stuff like this. So they are very aware of the creativity thing. So in the old world, I, I would say the old corporates are not that um, supporting that much. The new ones do. I was I was part of uh, I had a thing at uh, Salesforce and I know that they supported a lot Amazon as well. Uh, Milan and I can talk about Google and the others. So the new ones are supporting. So uh, the basically, SME, then it comes then it comes to leadership actually when we look at it. Would you yeah, would definitely. you think so? Mm, yeah, but Mil it's, it's yeah uh, I yeah Milana. Yeah, this is the, uh, but leadership, but also the 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 uh, industry that you are playing with. So all these companies advance as they're in the IT industry, right? More or less, and they are. This is like where you have to be innovative, or you you die. So um, fast paced. Yeah. Yeah, like for example, look at Netflix. I think it's the best uh, example of the innovate innovative approach which changed the company. Company which used to uh, rent video VHS cassettes, then moved to DVDs, and then now they're the biggest streaming platform in the world. And like uh, from knowing from my friends who are working working there, uh, like they're amazing how they're uh, fast, how how fast they are making decisions and and how they are solving, how they are being creative and solving problems. But you know what? Like <clears throat> there are a bunch of SMEs which are in Turkey. We call it patron shirketi, which is like boss company. So it's like my way or no way, and you're just a slave that needs to work. Um, especially when they're like these are micro companies with maybe like five or four one to five employees and uh, we know many people even like in Serbia in our in our region which are struggling with uh, with SMEs like that one and it's definitely not creative and on the other hand you have big factories where you don't really want your worker to be creative and say oh let me now take this from this belt and put it there so there are some um, jobs that by nature can be more creative and the others which just can't you need to follow the procedures uh, but again um, even in the big big corporations you leader can give you the structure and organization where you can even implement the processes because i'm sure that whoever worked in the factory and understood that the process is not good was able to improve that process it probably it's not me who never if, went into if if he, she in sp life. if he she spoke up and was listened to and paid yes. attention to of course so this so is where the leader steps up right so to, mm -hmm. to nurture the environment which people are free to speak and um being listened to and they when they have the idea that they see that their idea came to life so this mm -hmm. is about any kind of environment can be very creative and it can completely kill kill creativity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what about I mean, you basically answers how how can one nourish creativity when it comes to companies? It's through through leadership, uh, uh, setting that kind of environment, uh, listening and and asking questions, but also acting upon what uh, uh, their co co colleagues came up with. W what about your perspective, Bonnie? How can one nourish creativity, in your opinion? So I would say there is, like Milan said, there's uh, two perspectives. So how can you nourish yourself? creativity is like to step back to let go of trying very hard to get an answer so, so if, if you let go and if you allow yourself that answers will come and um, and trust yourself that maybe this first idea isn't that bad so this is what you can to do yourself so to step back and to say wait a minute I gonna do maybe something else I can meditate I can whatever wash dishes or so something else because Everybody knows that you, if you have, if you in the middle of a problem and you step out, then often the answers will come. Uh, so this is what you can do as yourself, meditating, stepping back and letting go a little bit in order to be able to receive answers because your brain will work still, but you just don't get it. And what Milna says is the leadership thing. That's absolutely true. So uh, the thing is, it's not enough as a leader to say, you can be free to give me also stupid ideas because just saying is not enough it's motivating like let's do i don't know maybe maybe let's try to find the stupidest idea possible so and then people won't try to try to get the good idea they will try to get a stupid idea and if if most so and then they will feel yeah you can say this is safe and then it could also be that from this stupid idea one isn't stupid it's maybe the solution 
And so, then so basically, the 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 philosophy behind it kind of to me resonates like what's the worst thing that can happen let's do a SWOT analysis but let's focus on what's the worst thing that can happen and then how likely is going yeah to and happen. and you, the, the thing is about leadership and the nourishing creativity is that talking don't make it right it's acting it's doing people say you know my door is always open but nobody gets through your door why it's because you don't act like it's okay to come so it's acting and it's helping that let's do this let's be silly and i think this is the leadership part of how to nurture that's, that's how you like to lead and to be led right <laughs> No, it's not how I like to lead, but it's just, you know, when, when I talk to um, SMAs then I, uh, or, or, to, or to big companies, then I see what is the problem in the team. And it's often not the team, it's the person who is above them and how he talks while I'm with them. And I see how he presents stuff. And so his weakness or strength is also the weakness of the strengths of the team. Sure. So, and, 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 and this is it's just often very, it's very, yes. It, I understand why you asked me to help your team, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, Milena. Yes, I wanted brief. to just, yes, yeah. brief, like, uh, I would just add up that there is a culture element as well into in the, in the creativity. And especially if we are talking about creativity and entrepreneurship, for example, why uh, United States, why they have a lot of uh, successful startups is because they are, they're fine with mistakes. It's fine if you fail. Well, in Europe, people don't like mistakes. So if you have startup that fail in US, they will say, amazing, you failed. So you know how to treat my money if you're an investor. While in Europe, they would say like, ah, you fail. Maybe you're going to fail with my money too. So it's uh, also the broader pers culture perspective and the uh, culture environment that can cherish or, or kill. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. I, I read a uh, couple of articles where it says, you know, uh, people would trust you more if in the US, if they see you have already uh, failed with with couple of businesses, uh, because you know, uh, you learned from your failures that you probably you don't want to lose again, right. Uh, but here it's it's embarrassing to say, oh, you know, my business wasn't as successful, so I had to shut it down and start yeah. something new. Yeah, okay. absolutely. But uh, the thing is, in Europe, people don't understand that success is a lousy teacher. You know, uh, you you don't learn from success. You learn from failure. And this is what the people in the US. It's harder. Happened. It's harder to, to, to yes, learn. Yes, but from. you learn more because, um, you know, if you try a thousand times, you know, how, how often Nikola Tesla failed? I think a lot. So he knows a thousand ways how not to bring energy, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, but if you, if he had touched it the first time, the right time, so how would he know all the other things? Because he in invented a lot. So I, I think success is a lousy teacher. I mean, I like it more, you, everybody, but it should be like, we should embrace it like, okay, it's a failure, I know more, I'm ready for the next step. Sure, sure. Okay, so what kind of activities do help all of you uh, to feel most creative? Um, and we picked some that come from uh, research uh, or various researches that that uh, we found. So what personally um, feels or what activities make you feel or encourage your creativity? Uh, so just answer to see what is uh, uh, making you feel more creative, which kind of environment, what kind of activities uh, that, that we posted here so we can see how we feel and uh, yeah, one more answer would be great. Great. Wow, interesting. Uh, let's share these results. So uh, we have board games and spending time in nature as top one or one and two, and then other activities uh, as well as number uh, three in this case. Interesting. Uh, yeah, there is a science behind playing board games, puzzles, etc., 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 because it's a problem solving, something that Milena mentioned. This is where she sees creativity uh, when it comes to spending time in nature, 
actually walking uh, helps teams to become more creative, which is uh, a research that we also posted on, on our social media that came from, from Stanford University. They did a research teams who spend uh, time uh, uh, together in, in uh, walks, making breaks and, and walking. They, they have those creative juices flowing for a longer period of time. Okay, now let's let's try to to uh, be quick quicker here. What is for you connection between comfort zone and creativity? Yeah, Milena. Should I, should I start? Sure. Yes. Sure. So <clears throat> I think that we're constantly hearing negative stuff about comfort zone and how we need to go out of the comfort zone, etc. Well, actually, we need the balance. You need to be in the comfort zone in order to rest understand, uh, assess the, the problems that you want to attack and then attack. Because if you're constantly outside of comfort zone, you're going to be constantly in the state of stress. And some people, you know, are creative under stress, but not if they're constantly under stress, under pressure. So uh, comfort zone, I would say it's fine. Um, also, if we're th thinking about comfort zone as a zone of rest, I think that it's absolutely necessary. So I vote for balance. Mm -hmm. And, and Bane was actually saying, you know, maybe even meditate, which goes to uh, going going back on your own, meditate, and this is where you can probably come up with an idea. Well, uh, is that it? Uh, no, I would I would totally agree with Milena uh, on that one. And I will uh, just add that, you know, you can, in the comfort zone, you can do things where you can come in, in, in a kind of flow, you know, if, if this... Uh, kind of thing i mean there are things you can come into a flow uh, so and this is like resting relaxing because you are you feel safe and then you can go out and and, uh, and try to get new things i actually believe that if you were before you go to your comfort zone uh if you were uh thinking about about a problem and then you go in the comfort zone and do something you can flow on that also your mind can bring up new ideas so i will also say it's the balance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's it's a it's it's a yes it's to balance and to achieve balance uh one needs to know him herself better so uh, where do you see relationship bef between self-awareness and creativity Christina. can we ask their daughter to mute <laughs> Oh yes, I'll, I'll mute her, yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So the relation between uh, self-awareness and creativity. Um, I think that, first of all, not all people are creative in the same way. Um, and um, I think that this is where the self-awareness is coming from as well, where you know what are your strengths. And it's completely fine that uh, we don't have the same strengths. I think, especially in the corporate life, people are constantly talking about strengths and weaknesses and how to minimize weaknesses and bring them to strength. I think it's wrong. I think that we need to focus on our strengths. Once when we know what our strengths are, we are going to be better uh, teammates and we are going to uh, speak from the perspective of strength um, and bring the better uh, influence in the, uh, in the team. Mm -hmm. What about you, Bane? Um, I think self-awareness is to to know you, to understand how you work, uh, what you like, what you are and what you're not. And as soon as you are very self-aware, then you can be, you can trust yourself to listen to yourself and then you can be creative. So um, think people sometimes put themselves in a position of want to be that or this or this but i think the first rule is to accept where you are what you are and from this point on you can say i will go forward so self-awareness is very important but people especially uh well especially in the balkans they play kind of self-awareness but they are not they're just you know covering something so um, as soon as you go, so back, you mean you mean you're, we are faking self-awareness? We Balkans a lot, <laughs> a, a lot. So we are like you know that you know this is this is so so typical for us, and uh, and behind this is love and also be scared. But it's for for the Balkans is not to be scared is is not 
you know, you, you can't be a man if you're scared, you know, and, and, and things like this. But there is a point of letting go. And this, I think that's very important, letting go in order to be more self-aware and then to be creative, to be strong and to show all of this what you are. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, self-awareness to me makes things, uh, as, as in this slide, more possible for you. Uh, and what Milana uh, also mentioned, um, I would just like to add, not, not our weaknesses, however, our blind spots to identify them. Because when we talk about blind spots, when we know where our blind spots are, it's easier to invite someone to support us. Uh, and it's, there is no shame in that, what Bonnie is saying, you know, we don't have to be that Balkan macho uh, man or, or uh, 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 um, I don't know, even a strong uh, uh, or too strong uh, a woman, uh, let's say, where we uh, probably need to be aware of, yes, as, as Milana mentioned, our strengths but not weaknesses, I would rather say blind spots. What we are missing sometimes, because there are definitely people who see, let's say Bane maybe seeing better, this big picture intuition yeah, but, where Milena likes numbers. Yeah, but, but <laughs> be let, very concrete. Let, me, let me just just put one thing straight. <clears throat> uh, if you are a matcha, that's, that's okay. If this is your way of being, as long as you don't put people down other people down so if you are you have this behavior that's absolutely fine but be it, yourself yes 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 be yes. yourself so, yeah be yourself right so there but are get some to know cool guys out there that are like like very have very big manhood and this is fine as long as they don't put others down but a lot of a lot of people they are not that but they playing this because in order to to make us uh, to make themselves to hide themselves from whatever. So that, or because they think that's the leadership style that they need to have in this cultural context. Right, right, right. So that's that's the other thing, yes. Um, yeah, so once we we are more self-aware, it's easier to, to then find this balance uh, where our comfort zone is, how long we need to stay in it, when to step out of it, uh, what are possible solutions, but then comes what we discussed while we were preparing this webinar, uh, what we thought was the first question, but uh, we put it as the last question. Are we born creative? So what do you think? Are we born creative? Here is the last poll question for all of you. Are we born creative? Yes or no? Yes or no? Let's see what people think. Whoa. Okay, we have here 70% participants or participation. 83% say that yes, we are born creative. Uh, does it mean that we cannot learn to be creative or that we cannot uh, uh, explore further or grow our creativity? What do you guys think? So again, if we just think about the creativity as an alternative or a new approach to the problems that we are facing, or just like approach that, that we are facing the problems and we are trying to find a solution, then yes, everybody's born creative because, you know, we need to learn how to, if you look uh, genetically uh, in the world, people who survived are the people who found a way how to find the food, right? So that's why it's like uh, creativity is built in our, in our genetic, in genetic code. But the problem is that uh, depending on where, how people grow up, so family, the first, second and third um, type of socializations are impacting um, how creative we are going, how much we are going to, 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 how much our creativity is going to flourish or completely implode, implode over the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh... Here is some data that was shared with me while I was uh, going through my certification for an NBI master trainer uh, by Solutions Finding. Uh, and I find it fascinating, uh, actually, what, what you're, Milena, uh, as well referring to. Like, yes, uh, let's say we were born creative, but what happens next? <clears throat> 
This is the population, 98% of population that is age three to five was found creative. 32% of population at the age of 10. So what happens here is from five to 10, we enter what? Educational Whoa. system. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Exactly. I knew it. That's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> and and I read one of the comments uh, here earlier. I would have answered formal education. Uh, uh, Alia from Sarajevo says uh, he he would uh, like to see more creativity in his formal education. <laughs> so obviously, uh, I would say it refers to this as well to some extent. And when we get to age of 15, teenagers, it drops down to 10%. And when we get to the adulthood, what is a, a consensus, a scientific consensus at age of 25 plus, it goes around 2%. Because we were taught that we shouldn't be making mistakes or that making mistakes is not a very good thing. I'm saying generally speaking, right? However, when we look again at this, what Scott Adams said, it's uh, uh, allowing yourself to make mistakes, but the art to know which ones to keep. And this is what we see a lot in kindergartens. There, there are no mistakes there, right? There's just playing. Yes, Bane. Actually, actually, I would, I, I would, I would, um, I would add is not allowing yourself for the leadership is allowing others to make mistakes. So this is, I mean, this is one perfected to yourself. Absolutely if right. You're yes. A leader, and if you are a team, and it's Self also and others. Not yes. only to, yeah, and and also and also in, you know, sometimes there are groups, like four or five people, colleagues, friends, whatever, and one is having a, a mistake, a silly idea, or it's just creative. Not to judge him, to say oh, you're so stupid, man. Come on, really? You know. So just try to be a part of the group who supports creativity, new ideas and the bravehood of telling it and, and instead of pushing people down and say that's stupid. So this is also to create an environment of people who are pulling people up instead of pushing them down. Just, just to add, note. sure, sure. Uh, and this, what you're saying, is actually referring to the next quote uh, that I really, really like. Uh, and this is what I'm trying to do always. And this is why I invited you, that I can use always the power of all the brains that are uh, available to me. So thank you for sharing your brains with me, uh, because only in this way, uh, at least from my perspective, I can learn more. I can find solutions that I, I, I didn't see before for same problems. Uh, and I think if he, we as leaders, uh, uh, no matter of, of our, our former or informal leadership role, allow others to speak up, we'll get the most out of it at, at the very end. And our team will we'll make our team available, uh, that knowledge. So to conclude, uh, we, pick, let's say, five, five key things. Feel free to share your ideas. There are no stupid ideas. This is what Bane was, was pushing numerous times during this webinar. Uh, no stupid ideas. Just share them and see. see uh, uh, you, when we were preparing this, you, you used and instead of but, right? <laughs> when yeah, you're right. arguing with someone, exchanging ideas, use OK this idea sounds this 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 and this and what yeah. if we would do it maybe like this or like that yeah, instead of actually, but it's not gonna work yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's actually uh from an improvisation uh workshop i i used to uh, be in that we rehearsed to just follow up an idea any idea with an end and add something into it so uh and you see that conversations go a lot further with yes and instead of yes but because mm. then you push the rest away and then you put another thing and then you put this away so you cannot add things up so uh, this was just an um, i i re remembered this um exercise yes right 
So exchange perspectives and ideas with different minded people. Very important. We think differently. We already saw here different and heard different perspectives from both Bana and Milena, although it, they sound to a certain extent alike, but they come from, from different experiences and, and with different mindset. Uh, getting out of the comfort zone may boost your creativity, but finding that right balance is very, very important. How long to stay in the comfort zone, how much to get out and those frequent walks do help so anytime you have uh well not anytime you have find time to have those walks uh get to know how your brain works uh this is what milena was was mentioning uh strengths find your strengths work on them and i would just like to add uh, discover your blind spots and make sure that you have others help you cover them when necessary but use your strengths and find time to play and experiment. Uh, it's very important. Uh, I do uh, from time to time uh, play, uh, um, what's the name? Uh, I play a, a puzzle game, let's, let's put it that way, that kind of puts me in, into a comfort zone, but also stresses me out a little bit because I need to solve certain problems. So, um, Questions now for, for the audience. Uh, what did you like the most or found most useful? Uh, please type in chat today. Uh, or if you have any questions, please, uh, or, or you would like to share something with us, please do so. Uh, and uh, yeah, what, what else we can answer here? While the audience is warming up for the questions, let me just add something else. We're constantly talking here about like creativity and mentioning teams. And I would say that uh, people being social beings, um, I think that our creativity uh, predominantly comes from interaction with the other people. And especially now in the environment of, you know, COVID and like working from home and many people preferring, preferring to work from home. Um, actually, the reason why they want to work from home are something completely different, not because they want to work. Uh, you know, being very loud about uh, uh, inefficiency of working from home, I think that creativity uh, and especially improving the process, uh, finding new ideas are going to be tempered um, and uh, decreased uh, with work from home models. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Here is Miroslav. Uh, he appreciates your different perspectives and find it very, very useful. Um, so uh, I would, I would just, I would yes, just, uh, because. I, I had a, a thought and it was in, uh, it was your second tip um, uh, and I would like to leave the audience with, with a question and, um, and they can think about it. So imagine if you if you know about something yeah you, you know about so something what is needed for you in order to change your mind because this is to be open-minded. So if you're an expert in something and people come up with, with something else, think about it, what is needed for you in order to think about it, this, could this be true? Is it the role of the person? Is it the, I don't know, uh, uh, the position, his money or her money or success or experience? What is needed for you to, ch to think about changing your opinion and one step ahead is why you need this because why couldn't a cleaning person have an idea which is not in your area so where is your thing where you where you stop people coming in or ideas or something this is just to to think about how open-minded are we really mm -hmm. Well, that's that's a great point and reminds me of a story uh, that I heard. If it's true or not, I don't know. And just to wrap it up with this, uh, there was a, a huge truck uh, stuck in a tunnel somewhere in the US. That's how the story goes. And uh, they tried to pull it out, but they couldn't. The sheriff, uh, sheriff office came in. Uh, or people from the sheriff department, then they uh, couldn't get it out. The fire department came in, they couldn't get it out. They even invited the National Guard and the huge line of vehicles 
uh, was 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 there. Uh, so and they were about to uh, almost to blow up a part of the tunnel so they can take take the truck out. And a little girl that was sitting uh, in 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 a, a family car asked someone, "Hey, what if you?" Uh, take some air out of the the, the um, tires, out of the truck tires. Wouldn't it fall down a little bit more so you can pull it out? And everyone was like, all the engineers and all the, you know, like, oh my God, yeah, such a simple solution to something like that. And sometimes, as, as you mentioned, you know, even a, a cleaning lady can see something that is to her very obvious. Sometimes people that we don't think are related to our work can see things that are very obvious to them, but we're missing them somehow. And that could be a winning solution for all of us. So uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, now it's time to, to uh, exchange contacts uh, I'm here sharing something uh, uh, or the names of the people that uh, of a network that I belong to. Uh, and I'll also share your contacts, Ban and Milena, uh, LinkedIn contacts here in chat so we can all connect uh, as well. Uh, if you have other questions or you would like to pursue, uh, I don't know, even a collaboration or, or try to find out more about Milena or Bane or what their business is, please feel free to do so because after all, this is also an opportunity for all of us to connect and to uh, create more value, both for us, our businesses, and hopefully as well to the community. So, George, thank last you words for, for yeah, yeah, just thank you and, and Anna for preparing this uh, webinar and for uh, such a great hosting and really keeping the balance between e everything. That was really great. Thanks a lot. Milena, last words. No, thank you so much for the opportunity to share some of our thoughts and I hope that everyone uh, will think about more about how they can bring creativity into daily work and life after this webinar. Okay, thank you all and uh, hopefully see you all soon uh, for November. We're planning another uh, uh, topic, but this one will be for the uh, or at the HR World event instead of webinar here. So we'll be online in the uh, during the HR World event. See you all soon. Thank you very much and keep following us. And of course, stay in touch with Ban and Milena. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.